Lecture 3, we will be continuing with market abuse and insider trading. So, now we are looking at, you've committed these offences, what happens now? So, Section 82 gives the sanctions for insider trading. So, Section 82 first deals with Section 78.1. 2 or 3. So this is with regards to dealing with your account or on behalf of someone else. Remember, number 4 is disclosing information and number 5 is getting someone else to trade. So firstly, the equivalent of the profit or the loss avoided. An amount up to a million rand, the interest and the cost of the suit. So there is the penalty, the administrative penalty that you will have to pay. It also talks about two. So here, section 80, 78, 4 and 5, you don't just get away with it. You've got an extra sanction added on to the bottom. So as you can see, A, B, C and D are the same. The profit or the loss avoided, an amount of up to a million rand, the interest and the cost of the suit. However, you've also got E, the commission received for such disclosure. So if you were paid to give that information, you have to pay that back. That's part of the sanction as well. Now we are looking at an example, how the section is applied. So I'll show you a very basic table on how I apply this section. And from the table, you can then put it into words easier. So company H owns 78% of company S. Both are listed. Both companies have put out a cautionary announcement. So it talks about the potential offer to buy out minorities. On Wednesday, the parties agree at an offer price of 20% above the ruling price. Trading in company S's shares accelerates from 4 o'clock on Friday and the price increases by 7%. The announcement is only made on Monday. So now, you think to yourself, between Friday and Monday, what happens? The price went up by 7%. So trading in the shares accelerates on Friday, but the announcement is only made on Monday. So between Friday and Monday, people with access to that information are trading. So now I'll say to you, who bought shares between Friday and Monday? So the wife of an executive director in company H, a non-executive director in company S, an employee of one of the advisors, a friend of that employee, portfolio manager at a stockbroking firm, various clients of that portfolio manager, and a major shareholder of S has purchased an, an unlisted option on the company S. So those are the people that have bought between Friday and Monday and the price then increased by 7%. So now each of these people you have to first establish, is this person an insider? Okay, well, the wife of a non-executive of an executive director. So we already know a director is an insider and anyone who has access to that director is an insider as well. The same goes for two, a non-executive director. We know that an employee is an insider as well. The friend of that employee is an insider too because they have direct access. A portfolio manager is not necessarily an insider. They just may have that inside information. The client's the same. A shareholder of S, I would say, is an insider as well. As they have information regarding that company. So now we know who's an insider. And we also know that this information is inside information because you can see it was only published, made public at 8.45 on Monday morning. So between Friday and Monday, that was inside information. So the way I've set it out here. OK, I put all the various offences, OK, and we now have to think about each person. So the wife of the director, what did they do? Which offence are they guilty of? So they traded on those shares, the same as the wife of the non-executive director. But then we get to the employee. 
So the employee traded, so section 78.1. But now we see the friend of the employee also traded, which means there was information that was disclosed. And that's why section 78.4 is there as well. That information was disclosed to other people. Was it disclosed as a virtue of his employment? So we don't know if there are defenses yet. You can draw from the facts. Was there a defense? So you can say if the information was disclosed by virtue of the employment, he has a defense. But he told his friend, therefore, no defense. Portfolio manager. He traded on his own accounts. He traded on behalf of his clients. Section 78.3. And section 78.5, he disclosed that information to his clients. Next is the clients. Section 78.2, someone traded on the client's behalf, right, with the information, obviously from the portfolio manager. And then the shareholder is also guilty of section 78.1, trading in inside information. So now, this is your thought process. You now think to yourself, here are the offences. Here's everyone who committed an offence. You then go to each one and decide if there's a defence available. Then we look at the sanctions, right? So we discuss the sanctions with section 82.1 and section 82.2. So those guilty of 78.1, 2 or 3 will, be guilt, will have profit or loss, penalties, interest and cost of suits. Those that are guilty of 78, 4, and 5 will also have the commission there as well. So now, you also have criminal penalties. Those are your civil penalties. So civil penalties, criminal penalties, different. So your criminal penalties in terms of section 109 can be up to 50 million rand and life in and 10 years in prison so the difference between the civil penalties and the criminal penalties in your civil case your balance of proof is much less than in a criminal case so in a criminal case you need to prove beyond reasonable doubt there must be no doubt in your mind that this person is guilty because the sanctions are more severe whereas in a civil case if you weigh up the probabilities there is more it is more possible that this person is guilty so the civil and the criminal have different balances of proof